About 10 days out from Thanksgiving right now. It's the 28th, which is not this Thursday, but next Thursday. And you have a wedding coming up in a few days. Saturday wedding, mm-hmm. Friday rehearsal dinner at my house. Mm-hmm. So if you don't think I'll have a few things to do this week, <laughs> you're wrong. I will have plenty to do this week. Uh, via telephone, Nick Shirley. He is a local stu- uh, kid and a, I guess a, a man by now. He's in, I believe, his third year at the U.S. Naval Academy. Nick, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Great yeah, to... I'm in my third year at the United States Naval Academy. And uh, wh- where did you go to school locally, Nick? So I grew up in Martinsburg my whole life, and I went to Spring Mills High School, graduated class of 2021, and then I spent one year at West Virginia University in Morgantown. And then after my first year at West Virginia, I came to the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. How, how did that work that you didn't go straight out of high school, that it was uh, a year after your, uh, your schooling ended at Martinsburg, or Spring Mills, sorry? So in high school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do after high school. So I was a little late figuring out I wanted to go to the Naval Academy or a service academy. I ended up getting an application in but was not accepted. I got put on the wait list and then never got accepted. So uh, growing, living in West Virginia and growing up there, I think most people love West Virginia University. So I was like, hey, I want to go be a part of that school. So I went to Morgantown, had a great time up there, and put a second application in to the Naval Academy, which... I was accepted then, so then after my first year, pretty much once I finished my exams in May, I had to report to the Naval Academy to start Plebe Summer. How did Plebe Summer go for you? Can you describe that for us? It's it's very challenging, but very rewarding. I definitely remember laying in my room the first night of Plebe Summer after getting screamed at, and then they shaved your head. And I had two roommates at the time, and I remember looking at them thinking, what the heck did I just do? (laughs) <laughs> um, but very rewarding, and those people are now my best friends. So I'm very glad I went through it. Very nice. And you are, as we said, in your third year, and this is it's four years to get through the academy program, correct? Uh, yes, sir, four years. Okay, and then what will happen with you after your fourth year at the academy? So you spend four years developing morally and mentally, physically, and then at the beginning of your senior year, we call it first class year, you will put in service assignment preferences. And actually this week on Thursday, our seniors will find out what job they will have for the next you know, portion of their life. The, the contract depends on what job it is. So an aviation contract, you, know, you have to spend a little bit more time in the military than you know, maybe driving a boat or being a Marine because we're going to send you to pilot school, which you know, we're investing more money in you, so they want a little bit more in return. But they find out on Thursday. And then upon graduation in May, they'll report to their duty stations. Now, the photo you showed uh, that we're showing right now that you had sent to me, uh, are you the middle of those three people? No, I'm on, I'm on the far right. So that's after uh, I'm on the far right. The okay. person in the middle is one of my roommates, and the person on the left is another one of my company mates. And that picture was taken right after we signed our contract. So a really unique thing about the Naval Academy is that your first two years here, there is no contract. You get to come take all the classes, experience what it is to be a midshipman, and then at the start of your third year, your junior year, you will sign a contract saying, if I leave now, I will pay back what the government has given me in scholarships and opportunity. Um, So, like, now I'm kind of tied in, so we took that picture after we signed the contract. But prior to signing that contract, you can take all your credits and leave whenever you'd like, which is kind of a – you know, a nice thing about this place. And you'll be what rank when you leave the academy, and for how many years are you committed to the Navy? So if I commission into the United States Navy, I'll be an ensign or an O-1, and with a minimum time commitment of five years. If I join the Marine Corps, I'll be a second lieutenant, uh, which is also an O-1, and it's also a five-year commitment. Now I just happen to have minimum, in, minimum time commitment. In studio with me, a man who went to the uh, was in the Navy himself, and then uh, retired from NOAA as a two-star admiral, Bill Stubblefield. Bill? Yeah, but I did not go to the academy. I Correct. went to OCS. And uh, and a question, uh, Nick, that I have. You mentioned the Navy Academy challenges you and trains you in three broad areas, morally, mentally, and physically. Uh, and using the Marines, it seems like the emphasis on physical. Uh, in OCS, the emphasis is on the, the, uh, the mental aspect. Uh, in the academy, is there an emphasis between these three? 
I would say that each one is unique, and the Academy finds a way to challenge every person in all of those ways throughout your four years here. Uh, as a plebe, you're really challenged physically. A lot of what you're doing is mandatory morning workouts, mandatory Saturday morning trainings. You know, you've just been challenged for six weeks during plebe summer, so a lot of your, you know, physical mission is coming there. And then they're kind of hoping that through that, you're gonna. A lot of these habits that they're teaching you will stick. So after my plebe year, I went into youngster year or sophomore year, where I continued to train, and I was, I was like, wow, I can do a lot more than what I initially thought. So I ran two marathons. They, so they're kind of planting these seeds of how to challenge yourself physically, even once the focus kind of shifts off that here. But every semester you have to take a physical fitness test. So I would say even though you're not a plebe anymore, you still get challenged physically at least once a semester when you take your physical fitness assessment. And then morally, I mean, every single day you're kind of challenged morally when it comes to, like, telling your roommates, hey, like, we got to do the right thing. Or we have something called the honor system here where – we actually report each other if someone gets caught cheating. Like, we, we turn each other in because we feel like if someone's cheating here, like, not only are they taking credit away from my degree, but they're also taking credit away from the institution and what we all stand for and work really hard for. So every day you get challenged, whether it's somebody telling somebody, hey, you're not supposed to be chewing gum in uniform, or you see someone cheat and you're like, hey, dude, did I just see you cheat? Uh, but it's all midshipmen ran, and a lot of it is trying peer-to-peer leadership, which – a lot of people, including myself, would say it's the hardest type of leadership is peer-to-peer. And then mentally, you know, not being able to come home very often. I probably am home for less than 30 days a year. That can be pretty mentally challenging, especially as an 18-year-old. I'm 22 to the year of college, so I'd like to think it's a little bit easier for myself than some of my peers, but I definitely know that it can be challenging to be here for so long in a kind of a hyper chamber of, stress and pressure and there's always something you have to be doing staying up late so i would say the naval academy definitely finds a way to challenge you and put emphasis on all three of those what is your what's your major nick quantitative economics okay and what do once you graduate what is your uh where do you hope to go right now i think i'm looking into the marine corps I, I, marine air is something i'm heavily looking into but either between marine air and marine ground i my friends give me a hard time they're, they're like, you don't want to join the Navy. You don't want to be on a boat? I'm like, ah, I, don't, I don't know. I, I was on a boat for 30 days, DDG 102, the Samson. I spent 30 days aboard the Samson this summer and, and really enjoyed it out of Everett, Washington. But when I look at like what I really enjoy doing, and I think this might be even rooted in being that I grew up in the great state of West Virginia, but I just really love being outside and like being able to run. So, Well, if it makes you feel any better, Nick, my nephew, uh, Brandon, recently retired from the Marines, and he wasn't all that fond of his time. He had to be on a ship for 60 days either. So <laughs> you may be you got you to follow your, your heart on this one. Mr. Gilstrap. I'm curious, did you ever cross paths with a faculty member, uh, Commander Barraby? Claude Barraby? I have not, no, sir. Okay. He's the, o- the only faculty member there I know. Uh, I'd take a flyer on that. Uh, so if, if you commit to the Marine Corps, that would be in your first class year? Yes, sir. So how does that change? Um, different uniforms, certainly different, different tactics, different mission than surface Navy and everything else. So is that, do, does your time there at the academy go to a, a start hanging out with, with different people doing different things than others? So throughout your three years, or throughout your four years here, a lot of the curriculum, you know, no matter what your major is, is the same. We all take leadership. We all take ethics. We all take seamanship. So you build this baseline in, in leadership. Um, we have an entire department called the Leadership Department. And to be honest, it's my, it's my favorite department. I, I really enjoy my classes there. But when you pick your job your senior year, you will then take a class the spring semester before you graduate called practicum, where you will essentially spend – a large portion of the of your last semester at the Naval Academy, really, really, really dialing in for whatever that career field is that you picked. So while you get a – think of it as if you start really broad when you get to the Naval Academy, and then as you get closer to the exit, it kind of narrows towards what career path and what the emphasis that you're focusing on. So that Marines will take a Marine practicum with all the other Marines that have selected it with a Marine instructor who will prepare you for what's next after graduation. And for the Marine – cases pilot or ground you go to a school in quantico virginia called the basic school where every marine becomes a rifleman okay so there's marine corps basic training of some sort that comes after the naval academy oh uh, yes sir okay 
and and you won't fi- if so is there a second choice do you fill out a list of five choices if you don't get the first one then you you get a second or third yes sir so i, I would put marine air first and then marine ground second and then i could put navy air third and then navy flight officer fourth uh, along so on so it's all the way down and I may even have submarines somewhere on there, probably towards the bottom. Yeah. You did not mention Navy surface. When you're on the Samson, what did you do, Nick? What what jobs? So I was with the uh, ETs, which is, for those that don't know, it's uh, electronic technicians. So a lot of what I, or I seamen were other people I worked with, which is in internal communication. Uh, so really, I followed around a lot of different people, different rates, went in the engine room, I really just shattered what it was like to be an enlisted sailor because the Naval Academy puts a lot of emphasis on learning who you're going to lead. And enlisted sailors and Marines, to be honest, are are one of the most valuable assets the United States has. So understanding them and understanding the issues that they may have, you know, as going into my junior year here really allows me to change my focus and really put a focus on what am I, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm ultimately preparing myself to lead these sailors and Marines Yes, chemistry class matters. Yes, physics matters, because you got to pass them to get out of here. But at the end of the day, like I'm training to be able to lead these people to the best of my ability. I'm glad you mentioned that they enlisted the most valuable asset. Uh, they tend to uh, not to be given the credit they they deserve. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. They are the backbone of any of the military, uh, the in the enlisting component. So as an officer, I always felt privileged just to uh, to try to lead them because they are really capable individuals. Nick Shirley, yeah, I've never felt more purpose in my life than I have at the Naval Academy. Coming, you know. I, I really enjoyed my time at West Virginia. I had great friends there, and I I really enjoyed my teachers there. They were very kind to me, and they really enabled me to continue my application, and they encouraged me to reapply to the Naval Academy. But when it comes to having purpose, I I really find that there's no better job in the world than leading sailors and Marines. Nicholas Shirley, our guest here on the program, a Spring Mills High School graduate. He's in his third year at the U.S. Naval Academy. And the uh, Academy, uh, they do outreach and and, uh, spread the word about the Academy. And that's uh, what Nick is uh, doing here today with an opportunity to talk about his time at the United States Naval Academy. What advice would you give to parents who are listening to this program or grandparents, Nick, who have a son or grandson or daughter or granddaughter who maybe has a little bit of interest in going to an academy and the process uh, that you have to go through in order to gain admission. What advice would you give about getting through that and thinking through it? So when you look at it, it, it's a, it's a big, it's a big elephant trying to get into the Naval Academy. Certainly I know that having done it twice, but you kind of just get through it one bite at a time. I'm not a huge fan of that saying, but when it comes to this, I really think it applies. So, you know, hopefully you're early on in your high school career, freshman, sophomore, I would really put a hard emphasis on just challenging yourself. The Naval Academy, like having a good GPA in high school, it actually don't look at that that much. What the biggest thing they look at is is your SAT score. It's hard for them to to quantify GPAs from high school to high school to high school. But one thing that they standardize is SAT scores. So I would put a big emphasis on getting your SAT score up, getting your ACT score up, and just start getting in shape, doing sports, doing things that you think might challenge you and make you uncomfortable. Try to be the president of your class. Try to do public speaking. Join community service things. Just do everything you can do to get involved in your community and challenge yourself. Well, also, don't slack in school. I, I feel like maybe I slacked a little bit in school, and I'm paying for it now at the Naval Academy. My teacher's like, hey, you don't know how to take the, you know, do this calculus? I'm like, no, ma'am. No, I do not. <laughs> but uh, really, I'd put an emphasis on SAT scores and reaching out to your blue and gold officer. Every state and region has a blue and gold officer who is someone in the military, retired, um, or the parents of someone that goes there, and they can really be a good asset for you. When I was going through my process, I would call my blue and gold officer sometimes multiple times a week just because it's a big process, getting medically qualified, getting a congressional nomination. But definitely the first step is going online, going to USNA, backslash admissions, and the website there really will lead you through everything. If you're not sure, but you just want to get a little bit of a taste, some programs we offer here are summer seminar and uh, summer STEM. And this is for ninth, ninth through 11th graders who are interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. We'll let you come here for a week and kind of see what it's a little bit about in person. So that's kind of a brief little rundown of what I would tell myself. I didn't do either of those programs, but I've worked 
in the summer when they're going on, and I, I only have high things to say about them. They, they really allow you to see what this place is like. You kind of glossed over a phrase in there in the things you listed called, you said congressional nomination. Talk about that. So to get into the Naval Academy, it, it's uh, multiple factors. You kind of have to all, all get confirmed by the, physically, medically, academically, and then the last one is a congressional nomination. So everybody lives in a congressional district and then has, a, has two, well, we have two state senators. So early on, about August of your senior year, you will go to your congressional congressman's website or senator's website, type in whoever your congressman is. So like, I'd be like, Shelly Moore Capito, Military Service Academy nominations. And they'll have an application on the website. You fill this application out. They'll interview you. And it's very similar. They're just kind of seeing like why you want to go there, a little bit about who you are. And then out of their applicants, they'll recommend you to multiple service academies or just one. In my case, I got nominated to a couple different ones, which really is good for you because it allows you to have backup plans if what you know maybe your first goal doesn't work out. But you, if you get accepted to the Naval Academy but do not receive a congressional nomination, you cannot attend the Naval Academy is absolutely something you need to, to get in. So, And they only have so many of those they can do, so you, you got to get on that right away. So what was yeah, the difference? Yeah, I definitely say make sure, make sure you are not only, like, staying on top of these things, but I definitely recommend getting a mentor. I, I really recommend the Blue and Gold officer or just someone that has gone through the process before. In my case, I went to Spring Hills High School, and I had a phenomenal teacher named Fran Inman. She really, really, really helped me with this process. Um, multiple of her sons had went to service academies, so she was very familiar with the process, and, and she mentored me a lot through yeah. it. We had Fran on the show several years back, I believe, while her sons were, I think one was already in and another one was applying to get into one of the academies. Yeah. So, yeah. Her, her youngest work. son, his name is Thomas Inman, he's a senior here right now, and he's mm -hmm. one of my best friends. So definitely having mentors and will, will go a long way, as well as like some of these other, you know, kind of, saying that I've been saying it, it definitely takes a village. You don't get into the Naval Academy by yourself and you don't get through the Naval Academy by yourself either. It, it takes a village to get through it. Do you have a sense for what, <clears throat> excuse me, what the difference is between the first application that was rejected and the second one that was accepted? I would say there's a, there's a couple different things. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out that I kind of put emphasis on earlier is I didn't have a great SAT score. You know, I had this 4.4 GPA that, you know, I did great in high school, but in it doesn't matter if I did great in high school. If on the standardized test, I, I couldn't really perform. So I didn't do great on the SAT score. So my second time around, although I didn't have a, a super better SAT score, I was able to demonstrate on a college level that I could perform well. Having, I think I had a 3.9 GPA at West Virginia. So being able to show them that I could take multiple credits that were calculus, physics, chemistry at the college level, I believe helped my application, as well as the Naval Academy likes to put emphasis on having resilience. So I... I personally believe that it demonstrated that I had resilience through reapplying. All right. I want to know about Out the – or go ahead, Nick. Go I'm ahead, sorry. sorry. Yeah, fin please finish your thought. So the Naval Academy admits 1,175 students each year, and of those students, roughly 50 are students who went to college for a year. So a large portion – I mean, like a, a good amount of students go to college before coming here. And what's the breakdown with gender, Nick? Sure. So of the class of 2027, so they are sophomores right now, there are 805 men, 370 women. There were a total of 15,000 applicants, roughly 10,000 men applied, 5,000 women applied. And there are 59 prior enlisted in that class. So that's someone that was an enlisted sailor or Marine prior to coming here. And just kind of some other numbers that I'd like to point out here that uh, the, something you should be shooting for for your SAT score is roughly 6 to 700 in the verbal as well as 6 to 700 in the math and a cumulative ACT score of 26 to 31. So those are some numbers for those listening out there who are really interested in what they should be aiming for here. All right. I want to know about the Army-Navy game. It's in December this year in Washington, D.C. at Northwest Stadium, which is actually, I guess, in PG County. So how many of these have you been to? And uh, tell us what it's like. So one of the great things about the Naval Academy is that you get to go to every home game, every Notre Dame game, and every Army-Navy game. It's a <laughs> mandatory event, mandatory fun is what I like to call it. Um, so 
you get to go with your roommates, and they give you a big section where they make you wear your uniform, you do a march on, some jets fly over. It, it's pretty exhilarating. The Army-Navy game is, is one of my favorite events of the year. When It's always a sold-out game, and you really get to see, like, they use this saying, it's, a, it's America's game. You know, it's the only game of the year where the players on the field would die for this country. And I, I think that really exemplifies that these students, they're taking 20 credits, they're completing the physical mission, they're doing all this on top of all their football obligations. So it, it's a true, you know, those are my friends out on the field, and, and they really are exemplary midshipmen. But this is the year we're going to beat Army. We haven't beat them in my time since being here. But this is the year. I'm super excited for it. I'm also super excited. It's close to home. Last In the past couple of years, it's been in Philadelphia and Boston, so a little, little bit of a long bus ride. But I'm super excited for this year. I hope everybody tunes in. Um, and this is the year Navy's going to win. The the stadium where Navy plays their home football games, by the way, if you haven't been there before, it's really quite the place to go. They hold the Maryland High School Football Championships there. And my team, that where I coach, has been there three times uh, in the last, I guess, six, seven years. And every time you go there, it's just an honor just to step into the building, to be on that field. And they, they give you the instructions because you know, ringing the walls of that stadium are the names of all the battles where the Navy has been in its history. And they tell you, don't lean on the walls to go congratulate your fans or whatever. If you win, stay off the walls. That's hallowed ground. That's that's considered to be disrespectful. And Everybody honors that. Yeah, it's a beautiful place to watch a game, but also just walking on campus before, mm -hmm. after the game is uh, just awe-inspiring. Beautiful place, Nick, as is West Point. Nick, how did you approach the uh, the requirement to go off that uh, diving board, which is, what, uh, 30 feet up in the air? It's uh, Yes, sir. So it's a 10-meter platform. It's a diving platform. It, it's definitely one of the culminating parts of Plebe Summer, it's towards the end of your six-week time there. They have you step off the 10-meter platform. I remember stepping up there, not wanting to be first. Maybe I was third. And you, you created these bonds with these people you're going through plebe summer with. And not only do you not want to embarrass yourself in front of them, you know, you've got these drill instructors that are referred to as detailers. And I had the honor of being a detailer this last summer, so it was cool to kind of see it from both sides. But when you step to the top of the 10-meter platform, there's a large Marine Corps flag that you face in the distance, hung on the wall. And they, they tell you, it's like, go to the edge, look at the flag, remember the people that, like, have done this before you, and then step off. And I remember I did that. I took a deep breath. I stepped off. And then you feel your gut, you know, kind of fly up. And you're like, oh, my God, what did I just do? And then before you can think about it, you hit the water and you've made it. But... There's definitely that split second where you're like, I'm still falling. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, we're out of time. I thank you so much for yours. God bless and uh, enjoy the rest of your time at the Academy. Thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you so much. Wonderful, Have a great day. Go wonderful Navy. job, Nick.